بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone and welcome to this is football Welcome to another stream Ladies and gentlemen We are out here to talk about Liverpool's season essentially ending That's basically what has happened Over the last uh, 48 hours uh, You know um, Given the Atalanta result Given the, the everything that's happened In the English Premier League ever since You know Things are not looking uh, good You know so we're here to address it all. We're here to talk about it all. Uh, sometimes, guys, I like to do just shows by myself. Um, you know, there's no need for Tom Little today because I'm not in the mood for arguing. I'm in the mood for actually speaking the facts on the football club. Tom is only going to bring the IQ of this fo football conversation down anyway. So, um, before we get started, guys, obviously, uh, today is the um, date of the Hillsborough tragedy. So, big up to, 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 to you guys in the chat. I want you all to spam 97 with a heart emoji next to it. 15th April 1989, gone but never forgotten. Um, you know, and it's uh, it's it's something that's happened in the history of football that's going to live with us forever. There's a reason why we don't buy that newspaper. There's a reason why, uh, you know, we've been asking for just justice for almost 30 years um, because of what happened that day. So just for the next... 60 seconds i want everyone to just spam 97 with a heart emoji in the chat regardless even if you don't support liverpool guys this is more of a humanitarian thing you know you never walk alone of course thoughts and prayers are um with all of the people affected and their families some stuff uh are bigger than football and this is definitely one of them that's much bigger than football so you know um 97 with a red heart in the chat right now uh, you know our thoughts and, are, are, and prayers are, are with them also yeah, guys, uh, obviously today is, is the anniversary of that. And we saw the beautiful mosaic uh, yesterday on on, um, on the cop at Anfield. Absolutely incredible, absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, this is, this is something that obviously as a football community, um, we are reminded of every year, um, you know, at this, at this uh, point, point in time, at this time of the season. And uh, yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's something I wanted to start the stream with. Now, anyway, of course, as you guys can see, uh, please keep spamming that in the chat right now. Please keep spamming it in the chat. Some stuff matter more than football. Uh, as you guys can see on the thumbnail, I believe, unfortunately, Liverpool's season is finished. That is just what I believe in. And there's something I want to get off my chest before I even get to Super Chats, before I even speak on, on anything. Guys, you remember how yesterday in the game I was I was calling out, uh, you know, um, everything that's going to happen in the game. And I was talking about it like it's a movie. And I was talking about it like it's a, uh, you know, it's basically a repeat every time. Let me show you someone who got blocked earlier on in this chat exactly what, what they wrote down. Um Go manage your own small media uh, Middle East team, then come back and talk the way you do. You're a disgrace to the football club and anyone, including myself, that are season ticket holders would laugh at you and ask you, when will you show up? Right here. See, guys? This person right here got timed out and then got blocked. I'm not making it up. This is, this is, this is what's happened right here. You can see it with your own eyes. Literally, in front of your very own eyes. Guys, this is the part of the movie where essentially everything I've said now goes down to have you ever been to Anfield, if you know more than Klopp, if you know more than FST, blah, 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 blah. It's just the same stuff over and over and over again. Guys, being a Liverpool fan and a Liverpool content creator over the last three, four years, it's a genuine repeat of everything over and over and over and over again. And it's just jarring. And it's just the same shit, and it's just so irritating because it's just it's just so it's just so annoying. It's like you could write this, you could write this. You spend the whole year, you know, saying your opinion on the football club, supporting the football club, bro. My veins were popping when McAllister scored against uh, Manchester City, bro. I celebrated that Olise goal against Manchester City, the penalty at the end, like no other. Go watch how I celebrated the Fulham goal against Arsenal. Go watch as I celebrated the Fulham goal against Arsenal. To accuse me of being a fake Liverpool fan and all this, guys, we've been there. I've been there before. 
people who have been watching this channel, people who have been watching me for a long time, know exactly what I'm talking about because this is simply a repeat of this time of the season over and over and over again. It ain't, it ain't nothing right. It ain't nothing new. It's not nothing new. It's the same shit over and over again. Just because I called something right, which I didn't want to be right on, uh, you know, I was simply warning the people. Now I'm a fake Liverpool fan and all this. We've been there before, bro. It's the same stuff over and over again, and it's just jarring, and it's just irritating. You know, you have never been to Anfield. Yes, I've never been to Anfield. And congratulations on being born in a certain country. Congratulations on being born in a certain postcode. I am sure God asked you, where do you want to be born when you were born? And you made that objective decision. Guys, come on, man. Guys, come on. Let's 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 actually address the arguments that I make instead of just saying the same jarring shit over and over again. Have you ever been to Anfield? Do you know more than Klopp? Do you know more than FSG? Blah 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 blah. It's just boring. It's just boring. We've been doing this for the last three years. Come on now, we still do this stuff. You'd get laughed at. Why would I get laughed at? Because I said we are not going to win the league. Yeah, we aren't going to win the league. Season's done. Season is officially done right now. It's just as simple as that. We're going to watch the next six, seven games for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I'm going to make Vel change the name of Watch Along to Vibe Along. That's it. That's it. Imagine Bill Shankly was here. Imagine Bill Shankly was here right now. Who would he agree with, me or you? <laughs> would he agree with the guy saying that if we don't win the league title this season, it's a failure? Or would he agree with you that's doing the same stuff over and over again? And you know what's funny? There are people now already going like, um, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, the target at the start of the season was top four energy change yet again. Welcome to my life. You guys, this is the fight that I've been fighting over the last three years. It's the same stuff season in season out come April, March and May time. We're making all these paragraphs about how it just, it's just. It's just, you know, we were fighting against 115 club and City cheated and all this shit. And it's just so irritating and it's just so annoying. And I've had enough of it. So today we're here to just have a genuine conversation about the football club. Why are we in this position? Why are we in this in this place right now on 15th um, you know, of April? 14th of April, to be fair, because the game happened yesterday. You know? Given that 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 um, you know, essentially what happened in the Europa League season's done. So, yeah, big up to you guys though. Big up to the 301 people in here, guys. I don't want to keep interrupting what I'm gonna say because you guys know how these videos go. You guys know I just when I go in, I go in. So I don't want to keep stopping myself to say like and subscribe. We have 302 people in here. We cannot have 302 people in here, and we're not even on 100 likes yet, guys. Come on. You're actually moving worse than the Liverpool forwards. Actually, no, you're not moving worse than the Liverpool forwards. Sorry, I take that back. There is nothing worse than the Liverpool forwards. So like the video right now. Like the video right here, right now. Like the video. Subscribe to This Is Football right now, guys. Let's do this. Yalla, yeah, let's get to 100 likes ASAP. It's a free button. I will show you now how to click it. You get me? This is you watching us. Let me open my own video so I can like my own video. Because if you don't like you, who going to like you, Habibi? So... Let me show you. This is you watching us right now. This is you watching us right now. I want you to hit this X button. Hit this like button right here. See, we're at 100 already. Let's keep pushing it. Let's get to 150, 200, whatever it is. Mods, keep pushing it, please. Um. Anyway, let me just uh, do the super chats, Um. you know, before I get started and we just go in to this whole conversation. Um, big up to my guy Mo who says before the stream starts in Mubarak I was wanting to send earlier but couldn't find time to get on the previous streams it's okay Mo I've always said this to people guys never ever apologize never ever apologize for not being able to send the super chat or not being in a position to send the super chat or being busy or any of that stuff guys I understand I am not an a-hole you get me like I get it I swear to you I get it um, you know so I understand I get what you're saying but, uh, you know, I don't want you ever to feel bad or anything just because not being able to support the channel. It's okay, Mo. You've supported us already enough. You're a massive part of this family. 
We all love you. You get me? So I appreciate you so much, my brother. And thank you so much for the love. Dig up to her man uh, who says from big up from one title race, mud brother to another. Dig up to you, Herman. You get me? You guys tried to mock uh, Liverpool Football Club. And now look who's down in the dumps. <laughs> hey, us and Arsenal. Told you guys. That it's, just, it's just that big blue shark that you have to worry about. It's just the same stuff, guys. It's the one team you've got to worry about. I warned people and they didn't want to listen. Um, in retrospect, would you have taken 200 million for Salah? No, because the club wouldn't have spent it on players good enough to fill his boots. And I'm going to get to that in a second, Hydro. I'm going to have this Salah conversation once and for all. Big up to you. Uh, big up to Andrew says, after Thursday, taking a break from football because title races with City is very draining, but I agree with you. We have failed if we don't win the league. Big up to you, Andrew. You've been supporting the channel a lot lately. Um, I appreciate you. And uh, the reality is, my brother, when it comes to us not winning the league, if we don't win the league, it is a failure, 100%. 100%. You see, Andrew, the difference between me and other people, other people change their energy. I don't. Other people sit up here and go like, at the start of the season, um, you know, we wanted top four. That's not kind of not how I operate. When you're top of the league with five points ahead and, and all this and the position that we're in, I refuse to say top four was the aim. That's kind of not what I do. Uh, big up to Redline and Tarango says, Arsenal would have uh, won had we won, in my opinion, two butlers. I disagree with this. I don't think necessarily the pressure got to them. I just think they played really badly on the day. And Unai Emery outsmarted them with their tactics, with, with all of that stuff. So, unfortunately, Emery couldn't do that against Manchester City because that's still the big enemy that we needed to drop points. But anyway, I'm going to get to this title race in a second. I'm going to get to the season in a second. We're going to analyze why we're here, why the season's done, basically. So, yeah. Um, big up to you, Red Line Taranga. Big up to Andrew, always showing love. Big up to Herman. Big up to Hydro and Mo for the Super Chats. Guys, hit the like button. Mods, keep pushing it, please. Let's get to 200 likes ASAP right here, right now. Let's get to 200 likes quickly. We have 500 people in here. Get the likes up, subscribe, share the video everywhere as well. And it's time to talk reality. Welcome to all the people who now join me. Hold my hand and say, Hussam, you know, you were right all along. Welcome to all these people. You get me? Um, we're here. To summarize this segment, I'm going to call this segment Seasons Done segment. Let me tell you why I'm going to call this segment Seasons Done segment despite Arsenal's result. Let's establish something right here, right now. All of us together. You know what? I will live in a world of delusion. I refuse to say that City and Arsenal are both going to go perfect from now to the end of the season. No problem. It's okay. City and Arsenal are going to drop points. Yalla, let's all shake hands. City and Arsenal are going to drop points. No problem. City and Arsenal, both are going to drop points. Can you guarantee me we win six from six? Very simple question. Very simple question. Exactly why? You know, you guys need to understand what I'm saying. Very simple. Very simple point. 100% Arsenal are going to drop points. 100% City are going to drop points. Everyone happy? Let's, let's, let's just get that out of the way. Because this is what people always say. What makes you so sure that Arsenal and City aren't going to drop points? Forget Arsenal and City. They are going to drop points. Everyone happy? Simple yes or no answer in the chat right now. Are we going to win six from six? Very simple. Are we going to win six from six in this English Premier League? And if your answer is yes, tell me what sign have you seen to show you that we can actually win six from six? Why is the season done, Hussam? The same team that needs about 25 shots, 30 shots to score one goal. Is the same team that you're trusting to essentially score four goals against Atalanta away. And the same defense that has conceded goals to Luton Town, to Sheffield, to Manchester United, to all these crap clubs. I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, basically say they're not going to concede away in Bergamo. That's why the season starts. This is why the season is done. Simple. Simple. Season is done for the same exact specific reason. Forget the rest. Forget Arsenal. Forget Manchester City. Forget them, guys. 
Stop speaking about Arsenal and Manchester City. Let's talk about ourselves. Let us talk about ourselves. You want to say City and Arsenal are going to drop points? No problem. I'm with you. City and Arsenal are both going to drop points. Everyone happy now? Everyone has is, is everyone relaxed? Everyone satisfied? City and Arsenal are going to drop points. Let's establish that. Done. Don't make me that argument. I agree with you. Are we going to win six out of six? And if your answer is yes, what evidence have you seen over the last month or even longer to prove that we can win six out of six? What is your evidence? Substantiate your claim. The game against Atalanta this Thursday. Hussam, we can come back. Hussam, we came back against Barcelona. My brother, where is Sadio Mane? Where is Roberto Firmino? Where is Fabinho? Where is Robertson who can cross? Where is Shakiri? Where is Origi? Where's all these players? Divock Origi from 1819 and 1920 would have scored 20 Premier League goals given these big chances. Let's not sit up here and lie to each other. Are we going to go away to Bergamo, score four goals and keep a clean sheet? No, we will not. No, we will not. Who's more clinical, chat? Divo Corrigi or Darwin Nunez? Give me a name right now. Give me a name right now. Who's more clinical? Divo Corrigi, Darwin Nunez. Forget life stories. Write me a name right now. No need to write me your life story. No need to write me paragraphs or explanations. Who's more clinical? Divo Corrigi or Darwin Nunez? Damn. This whole chat is filled with Devo Corrigis, so I cannot be crazy. I've seen about 90%, no exaggeration, with Devo Corrigi, and the ones that are, uh, you know, writing uh, Darwin Nunez are rival fans who are trolling. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. Over and over and over again. There is no difference between this season and the quadruple charge season and the 1819 season people are unaware of who you're taking on people are really not focused on who we're taking on and i saw toka the fraud earlier on mentioned the europa league he doesn't realize this actually proves my point even further you know what's funny this is what's funny. We were riding a horse and there was a tank following us. That tank is Manchester City. I'm riding on this horse and I'm getting away. I'm escaping from the tank. The tank is now behind me. I'm ahead of the tank and I am running and I'm running and I'm running and I'm galloping on the horse and we are riding away into the sunset. And I'm driving in a straight line. To my left, I see a pot of gold. There isn't that much gold in it, but I see a pot of gold. I recognize if I go get that pot of gold, the tank probably catches up to me. The tank probably catches up to me. But I'm greedy. I know I cannot race with the tank. I know that if the tank shoots me one time, I am done out here. I know that I will get destroyed with one tank shot. Yet, I decide to go all the way left and try to grab that golden pot, even though I'm not good enough to compete on all ends. I said from the start of the season, this squad is not good enough to fight on all fronts. What did you all say to me? This is the Arsenal mentality. Hussam, this is the Arsenal mentality. Hussam, um, you know, if we if we take all competitions seriously, we can fight on all fronts. I told you, if you have something in your hand, it's better than having two things on a tree. Simple. Simple. 
having a competition in your hands is different than a competition that's on a tree. If I have a pigeon in my hand, why should I be greedy and look at the two pigeons on the tree? This is not a squad to compete on all four fronts. Europa League should have been our bench players from the start. From the start. We should have played our bench players from the beginning in the Europa League and sent a message that we couldn't care less about this competition from the start. From the start. Had we went with our starting 11, game in, game out, in the English Premier League, put all our eggs in the English Premier League basket, the outcome would have been different. But instead, I'm playing Mo Salah against Slavia Prague. I'm playing Konate away in Slavia Prague. I'm playing Trent in Europa League games. I am playing McAllister in Europa League games. I am playing forward line players in Europa League games. Had we from the start played fringe players and youngsters in the Europa League, the squad fatigue that people like to use right now, squad fatigue, the squad are tired. I think the reason why Konate is not performing is because he's tired. Did I not warn you three months ago when I was doing Hussam X Tom Little that they will use fatigue as an excuse? How many times have you heard the word fatigue? and tiredness over the last 24 hours. How many times have you heard the word fatigue and tiredness? How many times have you heard it? Over the last 24 hours alone. We're tired. We're fatigued. We've played too much football. This guy's tired. That guy's tired. That guy's injured. That guy's played too much football. The reason why Endo is playing like shit it's because he has been running to the ground. The reason why McAllister didn't perform is because he's been running to the ground. If I go into a fight with a sword and I know that the other guy is fighting me with a gun, I need to be smart about it. I need to be smart about it. It has nothing to do with Arsenal mentality. It has nothing to do with giving up. Winning a Europa League adds nothing to Jurgen Klopp's legacy. You know why? Because we won the Champions League under Jurgen Klopp. Why should I, as a Champions League winning club, even care about that Europa League dead competition to begin with? But in the group stages, when Jurgen Klopp was playing Salah and playing Jota and playing Endo and playing McAllister and playing Curtis Jones, none of you guys were complaining. Only one guy was complaining. What was the response? Hussam, you have an Arsenal mentality. Hussam, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, what did they say? Um, if I use the excuse of fatigue, I'm wrong. Sean is in the chat right now. He was one of the guys that wanted us to take the Europa League seriously. Sean is now saying Endo is tired. But I thought your response was always what? This was the response, guys, three, four months ago. They're football players. They should be able to play two games a week. Oh, they should be able to play two games a week. Okay. Um, so why is your excuse Endo is tired or this guy's tired? or Because factually, they played three days ago on a Thursday night at Anfield, so we didn't even travel. They were in the comfort of their own homes. And you know, a football player, according to you guys, is capable of playing 90-minute games, you know, in the same week, and it should be okay. There's a difference between having an Arsenal mentality, and there's a difference between knowing where you're at. The current Liverpool starting 11 is capable of winning an English Premier League. Everyone fit. Alisson, Trent, Van Dijk, Konate. I'm not even going to say the left back. McAllister, Endo, Soboslai. That's, that, would be, that would have been the starting 11. Soboslai for Jones, let's not argue it. That's not the point. I'm saying that would have been the starting 11 at the start of the season. 
front three, Salah, Jota, one of the dumb, dumber, and dumbest. Okay? That's the starting 11. This starting 11, in my opinion, is capable of winning the English Premier League. Simple. Simple. This is... No, I'm not saying what I would start. I'm saying at the start of the season, in August, I'd asked you guys. This would have been the starting 11 in every single Premier League game had we just focused on one thing. Had we just focused on one thing and one thing only. Yet, we decided with our sword against someone with a machine gun to try focus on multiple competitions. And this is why we are in this position that we are in. It is, has nothing to do with mentality. It has nothing to do with fatigue. It has nothing to do with tactics. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It simply has to do with focus and recognizing where you're at. I can't, in a season where I've sold seven players, bought four midfielders in, revamped the whole midfield, expect to be able to compete on all four fronts. The team that first competed on all four fronts had prime players, had experienced players, had league-winning players, had Champions League-winning players. Mane, Firmino. Henderson, Wijnaldum, Fabinho, Robertson, Trent, Allison, Joe Gomez. All of these players were there when we won both competitions. All of the players were there when we won both competitions. There's a difference between having a bad mentality and there's a difference between recognizing where you're at. I simply recognize where we're at as an institution, as a football club. I want Redline Taranga to, to not say anything. Because obviously, um, you know, I trusted him yesterday. I told him keep him between us. I sent him a screenshot yesterday. I sent Redline of Taranga a screenshot yesterday. The same people that have spent the last two years calling me negative are now doing videos saying the same exact shit that I said. And their life is so easy. You know why their life is so easy? Let me tell you why their life is so easy. Because at the start, when we're doing really well, all they say is Liverpool are going to win the league, Liverpool are going to win this, Liverpool are going to win that, and we're going to do this. And as soon as we fall off, they don't say I was wrong. They don't say any of that shit. They just say the same shit I've been saying for the last six months, despite them calling me negative. Redline and Taranga saw the screenshot. You can ask him. He can vouch right now in the chat. He saw it with his own eyes. He saw it with his own eyes. I'm not waffling. I'm not making stuff up. You can ask him. He's literally in the chat right now. The same shit that I say, they just end up saying six months, seven months later. You want to see a message I got on WhatsApp yesterday? Let me show you a message I got on WhatsApp yesterday, yeah? <coughs> Let me show you the message I got yesterday. You were right. I was wrong. I hope we get nothing. This, this, was, this, this is the message. The other message. I was too naive. I'm not going to reveal anyone's names. I'm not going to say anyone's names. I'm simply revealing what I got yesterday. Guys, sometimes we have to look at the bigger picture in life. And I've been doing this for the last three years. If I do this again next season, or if I do this again the season after, I was on the Back Again podcast. And I said, in January, while we were top of the league and everyone was celebrating too early, I said, we need to sign a forward if we want to win the league. Can I ask everyone in the chat a question? Is Ivan Tony worth 70 million now? Is Ivan Tony worth 70 million now? Would you have rather been a league champion with FSG spending 70 million? Or would you have not been? Is Ivan Tony worth 70 M's now, yeah? Is he worth it or is he not worth it? Let me know in the chat, yes or no. Is he worth it now? Is Ivan Tony worth it now? Is Ivan Tony worth it now? Is signing a forward worth it now? I gave the deadest example in January. Huang He Chan. I said, even if we sign Huang He Chan at his big age, just because he's a better finisher than Dumb, Dumber and Dumbest, we would have been league champions. I'm, I'm giving you the deadest example. 
Huang He Chan. I am not even saying anything mad. I am not even saying anything crazy. I am saying Huang He Chan. That's all I'm saying. Someone who can put the ball on the back of the net given the chance. That's it. That's it. That is literally it. Huang He Chan. Remember when I said sign Ivan Tony in January? Sign Ivan Tony. No. He's 28 years old. Brentford wants 70 million. Yeah, the 70 million to FSG is like five pounds to me and you. Yeah. These guys are billionaire owners. These guys are billionaire owners. 70 million? It's too much money, Hussam. He's 28. Cry. Cry. Jamaican proverb. Who don't hear must feel. You didn't want to hear me in January. You didn't want to hear me in August. You didn't want to hear me the summer before. You know, they mocked me on Spaces last season because I wanted Paqueta. Who's laughing now? Would you take Paqueta now? Would you take Matthew Snunas now? Oh, look. Both players are fucking ballers. Crazy. Crazy. Big up to troops in the chat as well. Where's, where's troops account? Just saw it. Make sure you guys are liking the, 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 the video. These guys are ballers. These guys are ballers. One thing I would give credit to myself, I am wrong on a lot of shit. One thing I am right on is talent ID. My talent ID. You know, you know what's funny? Let me read, let me read you something. Yesterday I got a comment on my Ahwa stream. Yesterday I got a comment on my Ahwa stream. They were like, Hussam, why didn't we sign Sergio Ramos? He was available on a free. Do you remember my Sergio Ramos arguments? Would you guys would you guys have taken Sergio Ramos on this team? Mm. Remember when I said I would take Sergio Ramos in the summer? Did everyone ever heard of this? Just think of the elite mentality. Just think of the elite mentality you'd have brought to this team. Just think of the elite mentality you'd have brought to this team. Think of it. My transfer window, I wanted Sergio Ramos last, 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 uh, last June. I wanted him. The elite mentality he would have brought, bro, he would have brought an elite mentality to this football club. He would have, and he would have helped us win it. He would have helped us win it. This is just the reality. He would have helped us win it. Just because of his leadership, just because he's been there, done that. And I said we could keep him, uh, you know, playing maybe just important games, stuff like that. Just so, by the way, people think maybe I'm, I'm lying or trolling here. This may sound like I'm trolling, but why did Liverpool not sign Sergio Ramos? He was free. See, right there. Sergio Ramos, he was free. <laughs> Guys, you know, sometimes when I make arguments, I I just wish people just actually responded to my argument instead of just responding to the way I say stuff. Yeah, you want to say I'm an asshole? No problem. You can say I'm an asshole. But at the same time, at the same time, Forget how I say stuff. Let's actually address what I say instead of how I say stuff. Let me go to these super chats before I address all the elephants in the room because I do want to talk about Mo Salah and I want to talk about the forward line. I want to talk about all that, you know? So, um, and quote unquote, Klopp tactically because, you know, I can't wait for the Klopp argument now that we're about to present. Um, big up to Bake who says, I'm more, I'm more worried about us dropping points, not City. And Bake, that was my point earlier on. The reason that we will not win the league title 
And the reason why this season is finished, the reason why this season is finished is not us. It's not it's not Arsenal and City, sorry. Yeah, let me and you agree. Arsenal and City are gonna drop points. No problem. Guys, I will take it a step further. Let us assume Arsenal and City are gonna lose two games each. No problem, yeah. Are we gonna win six from six? The answer is no. We are not gonna win six from six because there is nothing stopping this from happening yet again. That's the point, brother. People keep looking at Arsenal and City. Yeah, forget Arsenal and City. Yeah, assume they're gonna drop points. No problem. Assume. I'll, I'll, you know what? I will give you the assumption. Yes, they're gonna drop points. Yeah, everyone happy? خلاص here. Arsenal and City are going to drop points. Everyone happy? Everyone satisfied now? Everyone, everyone, like just, just. Uh, are you all just like extremely happy and shit? Bro, come on. Come on. Listen. People keep saying this. People keep saying this about 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 the 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 the, the you know the the season basically and people think it's a joke but I'm not joking like it's just the fact that I actually just don't trust us bro forget the other teams <laughs> it's us that I don't trust people keep looking at the other teams it's just forget that I don't trust that we're gonna win six from six. Are you FSG out? You should be because they're stingy. Cooler, do you know who I am, brother? Asking if I'm FSG out. Do you understand why I'm hated by many of, of the Liverpool fans to begin with? It's because I am FSG out. <laughs> it's because I am FSG out. Yes, I, I am FSG out, brother. <laughs> you know, welcome to the channel, Cooler. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know where the hell you've been over the last three years when I've been calling out FSG. People actually forget uh, we played well at Barca. That's the point, red line of Taranga. People are acting like that team. We didn't deserve to lose 3-0 away from home against Barcelona, by the way. We were actually better than them in their own backyard. We were better than Barcelona at the camp now. Were we better than Atalanta? Well, I don't think we were. They even created more dangerous chances than we did. I don't even think we were better than Atalanta. So how am I supposed to believe that we're going to go away to Bergamo and score four goals unanswered? On current form, can we even win one game is the question, H. On current form, I don't trust us taking on anyone. You could tell me we are playing Blackburn Rovers tomorrow and I'd go like, we have to take our chances. <laughs> we have to take our chances or the season's done. <laughs> Like, it's as simple as that. People really think I'm taking the piss. I'm not. There is there is literally zilch stopping this from happening again next game. Nothing stopping it. Big up to you, Captain Sal. Imagine Darwin was in Origi's position for the corner taken quickly. You know what would have happened if Darwin Nunez was in Origi's position for the corner taken quickly? He would have either skies it or hit the post or hit the bar. And then, uh, you know, and then... Um, all the Nunez sexuals would come in here and start going like, <laughs> I love Darwin Nunez so much because he would thumbs up after he misses and the crowd would start chanting, Nunez, Nunez, Nunez. That's that's what would happen. Now imagine Dar now imagine Divo Corrigi got all the chances, all the chances that Darwin Nunez got this season. Divo Corrigi, you know, I'm not saying Ronaldo. I'm not saying R9. I'm not saying El Fenomeno. I'm not saying even... Me too, from his one season wonder season. Yeah, I'm saying Divo Corrigi. He was our bench player. He's our bench player. <laughs> he would hit the post or the bar or sky it. He'd then start laughing and then thumbs up the crowd. And then the crowd is like, Nunez, Nunez. Big up to you, Red Line Tarango. Big up to Nadal who says, Arsenal and Manchester City is going to drop points and we are winning six uh, of six by the other teams scoring own goals in the six games. And here you are winning the league. That's what Nadal says. Yeah, I mean, if that scenario happens, you know, yes, we'll win the league. If that scenario happens, then yes, we'll win the league. We'll win it, guys, if that scenario happens. You get me? Um, if, if Arsenal and Manchester City... Um, miss their chance, uh, you know, miss their chances in their games. They draw points for whatever reason, and then we end up winning, you know, the six games with with own goals and stuff. 
The only thing that you said is uh, that's unrealistic is apparently we're keeping six clean sheets, which I don't see happening, you know? So that's, that's what I'll say, Nibal. Big up to you, Habibi. Imagine you are a fish, but there's a big shark behind you. That's what I'm saying. Do I stop to my left and try to get this, like, other fish that I'm get, trying to eat, a smaller fish than me that I'm trying to eat? Or do I just keep going in a straight line so I can run away from the shark? Very simple. It's not a matter of mentality. It's a matter of realization. Big up to Redline of Tarango says, you're not the only one who was complaining. No, I'm saying on YouTube. When I say on YouTube, Redline of Tarango, I don't mean the community. I mean the people speaking about it. They're like, yeah, I want to take the Europa League seriously because that's who we are as a football club and blah, 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 blah. And this club is built on European heritage. How dare you disrespect Liverpool Football Club? Yeah, we were built on European heritage, Champions League heritage, not Europa heritage. We were right about Arsenal and they were right about us. I mean, that's a fair comment to make, to be honest, Jack. Uh, you know, I was right about us too, but I'm going to let that go. Just kidding, I won't. But uh, yeah, fairs, fairs, Jack. How? Uh, anyway, big up to all of you guys. Listen, there's 600 people watching us right now. Please do make sure you guys are liking. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Um, everyone, please hit the like button. Everyone, please subscribe to us. Guys, 300 likes. Mods keep pushing, please. We're about 50 subscribers, 50 subscribers away from uh, Toka, his head is gone, and I love it, and I love it. I hope you watch some anime after the stream so you can calm down. Put on your favorite cartoons, Toka. Get some chocolate-covered almonds, you'll be fine. Anyway, there's almost 600 people watching us. Make sure you guys are liking the video. Make sure you guys are subscribing right now. Please do hit that like button. Do subscribe. Let's get to 300 likes ASAP because I'm about to address the elephant in the room. I am going to address the elephant in the room. Mo Salah. Mo Salah. This is the Mo Salah section of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. I already know what every single one of you is going to say. And you know, I'll just say this. From the moment Mo Salah has stepped foot into Liverpool Football Club. From the moment he stepped foot into Liverpool Football Club, he's been hated ever since. 17-18, he's going to be a one-season wonder. He's just another quadrado. 18-19, wins the golden boot. Um, but um, Sadio Mane um, scored it without uh, scoring any penalties and, and he won the golden boot as well. 1920. We win the Premier League. He only scores 19 goals. He's a bit more involved with the team. Um, yeah, but Sadio Mane is better. 2020-2021. Last 10 games of the season. We're in 5th place, 6th place, 7th place, 8th place. We're crap. He helps us in the last 10 games. Win 8 of them. Draw 2 and qualify for the Champions League. Quadruple charge season. Six months, for the first six months of that year, that version of Mo Salah is the best I've seen. The best I've seen Mo Salah, version of Mo Salah in, in his Liverpool career. Dribbling past four or five players, creativity, goals. And we had people telling us, based on a Billy E, he still doesn't touch this guy and still doesn't touch that guy. He goes to the AFCON. Obviously, he suffers a loss to Senegal based on penalties. Congratulations to Redline Taranga, based on penalties. Comes back, scores just as many goals as Sadio Mane in the run, and yet Sadio Mane is a better player, and Sadio Mane carried Liverpool. Season after, Henderson's crap. Midfield needs a rebuild. Defence is not defending. Mo Salah still chips in with almost 20 goals in the English Premier League. And this season, it's the same stuff. Over. And over and over again. Yesterday's game. Yesterday's game. Let's look at yesterday's game before I analyze this season as a whole. Let's just look at yesterday's game. Who was our best forward yesterday? They were all, they all didn't have a good game. Let's establish that because they should have all scored. No, no agendas. Nunez, Diaz, Salah was our starting front three. Who was that? Who's the best starting front three player? 
Wait, who, who, who was the best player from the beginning? Out of those three. The ones that started the game. Diaz, Nunez, Salah. Who was the best one? And for me, the reason why I say Salah was the best one is because of his creativity. If you watch the game yesterday, people are expecting Salah to dribble past four or five players and put the ball top bins. That's not what he does. He has now become more of a playmaking style forward. Elliot makes the run in behind, Salah pass. Sabuslai makes the run in behind, Salah pass. You cannot blame, you cannot blame Mo Salah for yesterday. And you know what I realized? This is what I realized. People actually just have a dribbling fetish. The reason why people say Luis Diaz was good yesterday is because he dribbled past players. That's it. That is literally it. That's it. What's new? Luis Diaz can dribble. Breaking news. Shock horror. Luis Diaz can dribble. Luis Diaz was way worse than Mo Salah yesterday. He was one of our worst forwards. You dribble, 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 then you do what? Can I understand? And this is my problem with modern day football conversations. Because Luis Diaz dribbled past four or five people, it makes him had a good game. Diaz's end product is absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking. Pass? No. Cross? No. Shoot? No. Create? No. Make a right decision? No. Pass? Into, into, in behind? No. Nothing. Did Luis Diaz do any of those things yesterday? No. But what did Luis Diaz do? He dribbled. That's why we say he had a great game, because he dribbled. And it's funny, because when always when we get to this part of the season, by the way, if you want me, if you ask me overall who was our best forward yesterday, overall our best forward yesterday was Cody Gakpo. I thought he made a very positive impact on the bench and actually played smart balls in behind and, and, and actually played well yesterday. I think Cody Gakpo had, had the, 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 the best game out of the forward line overall. But I'm saying from the starting forward line. When you look at, at, at what Luis Diaz is doing, all he's doing is dribbling. That's it. It's just the same shit over and over again. It's the same shit over and over again. And there is something that I would love to share with you guys. All the people that are saying Salah this, Salah that. Guys, men lie, women lie, numbers do not. Here, I'm going to put this up on the screen. I will remove myself here. I'm, I'm going to remove myself. Explain this to me. Here. Forget the names of the players. Forget the names of the players. Player A, player B, player C, player D, player E. Somehow, player A is the reason why we're not winning. Somehow. Explain it to me. Explain it to me. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Explain this right here, right now to me. Right now, explain it to me. Explain it. Ladies and gentlemen, I will show this picture to my mom, who knows nothing about football, does not watch the sport. Explain to me how the guy in the first is the reason why we're not winning. Explain it to me. Other than all us as Liverpool fans falling for this rival agenda, singling out Mo Salah as the reason why we're not winning. Diogo Jota is a lot more clinical than Mo Salah. They have the same exact ratio. Same exact ratio. If I take this picture and I make it player A, B, C, D, and E, forget the names. By definition, how is it players A's fault that we are losing? And then I have Captain Sal with a clear agenda because he's a Diaz sexual who loves dribbling. 
saying how many are penalties. Had you read the picture properly, it would say big chances scored, big chances missed. This does not include penalties. This does not include penalties, Captain Sal. Explain this to me. Explain it. Someone explain it. You all were running up your mouth when we were talking about Mo Salah earlier. Explain this to me. Forget the names. How is it player A's fault? Objectively. How? How? Explain. How? Just because... All the rival fans have drilled into your minds and brains and corrupted your souls that it's all Mo Salah's fault. All of the rivals, because you switch on YouTube today, Spurs fan is blaming uh, Mo Salah, and a United fan is blaming Mo Salah, and a Chelsea fan is blaming Mo Salah. Yeah, they all have agendas. And you as a Liverpool fan are falling up for this crap Fifteen big chances scored. Fifteen big chances missed. Fifty percent. Diogo Jota. Seven big chances scored. Seven big chances missed. Fifty percent. Cody Gakpo. Four big chances scored. Nine big chances missed. That's four out of thirteen. Luis Diaz. Six scored. Ten missed. That's six out of sixteen. Darwin Nunes. Seven out of thirty-nine. Seven out of 39. 39. 39 overall chances. He has scored fucking seven. Yet it's Mo Salah's fault why we haven't won the league. Mo Salah's fault why we haven't won the league. I look at this graph right here and I need an explanation. All the people who were yapping about Salah, explain it to me now. Here, I have presented my logical argument. Let's go, explain it to me. Can everyone just wake up? Everyone just wake up. Nunes, 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 he's fucking shit. How do you look at this graph right here and tell me that it is Mo Salah's fault? Explain it to me. Who are our two good forwards, guys? Who, who are our two good forwards? Chat, in general, at the start of the season, if I said, name the two forwards that you trust the most in the team. Imagine I'm having this conversation with you in August. And I ask you, guys, name the two forwards you trust. Very simple question. Name them right now. Name them right now. Just name the two forwards you trust. This is August. Let's go back. Back in time all the way to, to August. Who, if I asked you, who are the two that you trust in August? Who would you say? Most people would say this. This is the answer. And it's reflected. And it's reflected in the numbers. It's the same shit, bro. No problem, Toko, if you want to say Gakpo. But you get the point, isn't it? Bro, here it is, bro. Jota Sala, Jota Sala, Jota Sala, Jota Sala. Same shit, bro. Guys, it's reflected in the numbers. I know for a fact, I know for a fact, looking at this figure, what? Objectively speaking, if I give Jota or Sala two big chances, they're scoring one. Factually. No agenda. Is that correct, chat? Yes or no? Factually, yes or no, chat. If I give both Jota and Salah two big chances, I'm going to get a goal minimum, correct? Yes or no? Yes or no? No agendas. No agendas. Pure numbers. 
give Salah two big chances, give Jota two big chances, I'm getting at least one goal. No agenda. You know how many big chances it takes Darwin Nunes to score one? Five. Five. You know how many big chances it takes Diaz to score one? Three. You know how many big chances it takes Gakpo to score one? Three. So I've got one from two, one from two, our best forwards. And then I've got one from three, one from three. And then I've got one from five. How many assists? Chat, be honest right here, right now. No agendas. Even if you don't like Salah, that's fine. How many assists would have Mo Salah had in the Premier League season had Nunez just taken the guilt edge goal scoring opportunities that was created for him by Mo? How many? Just be real right now. No agenda, bro. Be real. How many? How many? Just give me a round estimate, bro. Had Darwin Nunez scored the guilt-edged opportunities that Mo Salah created for him, Mo Salah would be on 19 Premier League assists. Nine ahead of the guy in first. Are you guys aware of this stat? I'm keeping up this, this, this bar, this bar graph in front of you guys. Just so you guys understand why blaming Mo Salah is just so idiotic. It's so dumb. How do you, how do we honestly look at this in, in, in the grand scheme of things and go like, Salah is at fault for why we're not winning the league. Jota is at fault for why we're not winning the league. How? How? How, bro? How? And since we went down the numbers route, we might as well just continue. We might as well just continue. Let's just go all the way, all the way throughout since we're having this Salah debate because people love to waffle about Mo Salah day in, day out. Because you have all fell for the rival agendas. Every single one of you has fell for the rival crap that they spew. Let's go to the Premier League website. Here, yeah, it's the official Premier League website. Here, premierleague.com. Here. Here. Everyone see this? Okay. Big chances created. Oh, look who's at the top. Oh, look who's at the top. You're telling me Mo Salah has created more big chances than Kevin De Bruyne? Than Bruno Fernandez? Who is a spam merchant who takes set pieces? You're telling me Mo Salah has the most big chances created more than Martin Odegaard who's played all year long, more than Saka, more than all these players. And this is with Salah being out injured for a whole month. For a whole month. Most big chances created in the entirety of the league. Guys, it's Salah's fault. Though. Oh, we're going to keep going. You think this ends now? Oh, this doesn't end here. Back to the Premier League website. Goals. Hey, look. Guess who's in third place in the top goal scorers list? Oh, the guy that we should sell. And now we go for what? Let's change the filter, no problem. 
Let's go to assists. Isn't that what, what forwards should be doing? Hey, look, in second place with nine assists, just one behind the top three leading assisters is Mo Salah with nine assists. So I have the guy with the second most assists in the English Premier League. The second, the third most goals in the English Premier League. The most big chances created in the Premier League. He's the problem. Sell Salah. Sell Salah. Get rid of him. I would sell Salah this summer. He's crap. He's done. He's finished. He's crap. He's done. He's finished. Get rid of him. Mo Salah's done. Mo Salah's shit. Mo Salah's crap. Mo Salah's not good enough. Yet, for some reason, we forgive this. This is what we forgive. This is what we forgive. 32 big chances missed. Nunez, 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 Nunez. 32 big chances missed out of 39. He needs five big chances to score one. Nunez, Nunez, Nunez. The other two have a ratio of one and three. And the best two forwards in our team remain the one in two. Jota, seven scored out of 14 created, 50%. Mo, 15 scored out of 30 created. 50%. Sell Salah. Get rid of Mo Salah. Get rid of Mo Salah. He's crap. He's the reason why we haven't won the league. He never delivers when we need it. Yeah. Um, who has the most goals against Manchester City in the Klopp era? Mo Salah. Who has the most goals against Manchester United in the Klopp era? Mo Salah. Who has the most goals against Chelsea in the Klopp era? Mo Salah. Who has the most goals against Arsenal in the Klopp era? Mo Salah. Who has the most goals against Tottenham Hotspur in the Klopp era? Mo Salah. Who scored the goal in the Champions League final? Mo Salah. Who got the assist for Roberto Firmino against Flamengo in the Club World Cup final? Mo Salah. Super Cup final against Chelsea. You're the same people that tell me GA does not mean you have a good game. Go, go watch what Mo Salah done to the Chelsea defense that day. That was Thomas Tuchel's good Chelsea. People have been hating on Mo Salah since he has stepped foot in this league and ain't shit changed. Six, seven years of consistent creativity, consistent goals, consistent output. Sell Salah. Get rid of him. He's the reason. He's the reason why we're crap. This is this what people say. Everything, you know why? You know why I find sometimes football conversation is jarring? Because everything now is an agenda and everything now is a narrative. Everything is based on agendas and narratives. That is all. That is all. Everything is based on agendas and everything is based on narratives. Nothing is based in reality anymore. And all people want to do is agenda and agenda and agenda and agenda. I've got Salah and Jota both on 50%. 7 and 7, 15 and 15. Very simple, straightforward, quick maths. 15, 15, 7, 7. Khalas. Simple. Problem solved. The rest. And actually... Let's look at the at, at, at the teams we dropped points to this season. Let's look, where did we drop points this season? Let's look at where we dropped points this season, yeah? Let's, let's, let's look at this. Let's objectively unpack this. Brighton away from home. Who missed the easiest chance of the game? Gravenberg. Who scored the two goals Brighton away? 
Oh, the guy that we should sell, Mo Salah. Luton! Who missed the easiest chance of the game and was by far our worst forward? Darwin Nunez. No agenda. That layoff header from Mo Salah into the feet of, of, of Darwin Nunez. Mr. Tappen from, from one yard. My mother would score that Tappen. Nunez, Nunez, Nunez. From in front of the goal. This is the goal, this is Nunez. Sent it to, to a different city. Arsenal at home. Who missed the easiest chance of the game? Trent Alexander-Arnold, I'll be honest. That was probably the best chance of the game. Who scored against Arsenal? Who scored against Arsenal? Say it to me. Say it to me. Say it. Say it. Say it. Who scored against Arsenal? Who scored against Arsenal? Who collected the ball on the right-hand side, dribbled past Zinchenko, got past Gabriel, put it at the near post against David Raya? Manchester United at home. Who had the combined big chance miss together? Diaz and Nunez. Remember when they both clashed and jumped into each other? Remember when Cody Gakpo got the ball right in front of the goal in the 90th minute and decided to pass because he's a coward? Manchester City at home. Manchester City at home. Who missed the biggest chance of the game? And who was it created by? Who missed the biggest chance of the game and who was it created by? Manchester City at home, right here, right now. Diaz missed the big chance of the game. And who was it created by? Mo Salah. Spurs away. Who missed the biggest chance of the game when we were with 10 men? Remember? Forget the robbery. Let's talk about the football side of things. Spurs away. Who created the biggest chance? First half, I still remember it till this very second. Till this very second, I still remember it. Who created the biggest chance of the whole game? Mo Salah. Who missed it? If you remember, you remember. See, even Toka now is, is coming to my side. Big up, Tyler. Tyler, by the way, you haven't sent me proof. I don't know why you say you've sent me proof. You haven't messaged me anywhere, Akhi. Message me on Snapchat or get my number from Tabang. Who missed the biggest chance? Spurs away. Luis Diaz. Who created it? Mo Salah. Old Trafford away. Who missed the biggest chance of the game? There was one that me and Tom shared onto your screen. Created by Luis Diaz, to be fair, not Mo Salah, but you get the point anyway. Yesterday, who missed the biggest chance of the game? Curtis Jones. Who was right in front of goal and hit it right at the goalkeeper? Nunes, Nunes, Nunes. Who even missed the third biggest chance of the game? Who was also right in front of goal and shot it straight at the defender. One of the clinical ones, Diogo Jota. Yet, guys, let's all sit up here and go like, it's all Mo Salah's fault. Atalanta. Mo Salah doesn't turn up when we need him. Atalanta. Who missed the biggest chance of the game? Hmm. So I went through all our big games this season. I went through all our big games this season. We have played United home and away. Arsenal home and away. By the way, Arsenal, our worst performance of the whole year. Salah didn't even play. So you can't scapegoat him in that game. Anyway, United home, United away. 
Spurs away. Chelsea, by the way, Salah assist for Diaz, one of the best passes of the whole year. One second. Who else did we play? Wait, let me count that again. The, uh, Spurs away. Why am I going in reverse order? City home and away. United, um, Arsenal home and away. Spurs away. United home and away. Chelsea home and away. That's nine games. In those nine games against the big sides, Mo Salah either created the most dangerous chance, got an assist, or got a goal. Yet, Salah doesn't turn up. Salah's this, Salah's that. Do you understand why narratives are dangerous in the world of football? Do you understand now, once and for all, why narratives are so dangerous to listen to? So dangerous. All narratives will do will take you away from the reality. Take you away from the reality and drive you and drive you insane. Because you refuse to actually address the things that actually matter. You know who's the you know who should who who genuinely in the chat right now. State your honest opinion. Even if you say Salah after everything I've said, it's fine. It's your opinion. Who should be sold the first forward that should be sold this season? Who's the first forward that should be sold this whole year? Now you're 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 in charge of Liverpool Football Club this summer. Who's the first forward you're selling? Who's the first one you're selling? I know my answer already. This is my answer right here. Fed up. Fed up. Absolutely fed up. There's two that I would sell straight away if I'm Michael Edwards. Darwin Nunez and Luis Diaz. Those are the two I would sell Straight the F away, directly. Without even thinking, I'd sell them both. I would sell them both. Nunez, now, officially, will be remembered as a Liverpool flop. Simple. Fuck all this niceness. He'll be remembered as, 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 as a Liverpool flop. Very simple. Never lived up to expectations. Never lived up to his price tag. Never done any of that shit. Luis Diaz, I, I have a suggestion. Remember how two weeks ago I told his dad, big up to you and everything, but stop talking to the camera? Now, I want us to give him a mic. Luis Diaz's dad, it's your time to shine. It's your time to shine. Give Luis Diaz's dad a microphone in front of him right now and a camera. I want him to announce publicly that he wants his son gone from Liverpool. Simple. I, j I actually, I'm being serious. Give give his dad the microphone and say, my son wants to, to, to go the hell away and my son wants to get sold. Simple. Simple. Diaz, bye-bye. Nunez, bye-bye. Simple. All this niceness is what let... There's a reason why I might keep Cody Gakpo. I'll tell you why. I actually think he might work as a midfielder. I'm not even exaggerating. I actually think he might work as a midfielder. And it depends because he has some form of technical quality that could be of use, which is the ability to keep the ball, pass left, pass right, all that shit. So there's stuff that he does well. You know? Cody Gakpo, I wouldn't be against selling, but I'd be like, eh, he's not worth selling anyway. You know? But i just just put him in, in midfield. You know? Um, if we sell him, I wouldn't complain, by the way. I'd be okay with us selling Gakpo. But I'm just giving an example. I'm just giving an example. My whole point to this segment was how do you watch everything that's happened from the start of the season and you blame Mo Salah? That's the thing that I just don't understand. And this is where today we have presented the full-on argument. Most big chances created in the Premier League, Mo. Most third most goals, Mo. Second most assists, Mo. 50% ratio of big chances scored versus big chances missed. Bro, it's so it's very obvious. The whole world can see it. Stop blaming Mo Salah for everything that happens on the football pitch. It's jarring. It's irritating. Simple. Simple. 
because I switch on YouTube and all I see is salad this, salad that, and it's just it just irritates my soul. It's time for us to grow up. And you know what's funny? I see the rivals, you know. They're even on my side because they're saying the fact that I've, I, I actually have to prove this is insane to begin with. Like the fact that I actually fully have to prove this is, is I, like even speaking about this is mad. Speaking about this is mad. If only Mo Salah's name was, you know, Salahinio or something, you all would have completely different energy. Simple, simple. It's like Arsenal fans blaming Bukayo Saka instead of blaming Zinchenko. It's like Arsenal fans blaming Saka instead of playing Jorginho for that shit pass at the end of the game. Bro, people people always fall for narratives. You see Hamza doing the Saka limp and khalas, now everyone wants to blame Saka. Stop doing the same shit. I spoke to Tom Little yesterday. I messaged him directly because people sent me a message. This, this is what Tom Little tweeted, yeah? Let me show you what he tweeted because someone on Snapchat sent me a screenshot of what of what Tom Little tweeted. Look, he acts like a smart ass. Look at this. If Salah stays and signs a new deal sound, if Salah goes on the summer sound, look, this 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 is the infamous Tom Little that you guys back sometimes when he comes on here. Absolute idiot, of course. I message Tom Little. I tell him, Tom, why don't you just state your honest opinions and stop doing shit for likes and retweets? Because I know you want Salah to stay. And he's like, no, I have a blue tick now, Hussam. This guy thinks I want to expose him. He messaged me, I have blue tick, so I have to make my money. That's why he tweeted that dumb shit. But you know what's his real opinion? I want Salah to stay. That's his real opinion. Anyway, the Salah rant is now over. Let me do the super chats. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing. How many likes are we on? We are on 330 likes. Let's get to 400 likes ASAP. There's 600 people in here. Please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe right here, right now. I want to do the super chats, um, you know. Oh, he's in the chat. No problem. Let him cry more then. Let him cry more. Biggest fraud in the world. Absolute fraud. He thinks I want to expose him. The only reason he tweeted that dumb shit is because he has a blue tick. Blue tick wanker. Anyway, let me read the super chats now. James Redmond nailed it with his analysis is what my memory says. I don't quite remember. I don't quite remember uh what james redmond said referring to this conversation to be honest with you like i don't really remember which part you're talking about if you could clarify that please my memories i'd appreciate it because to Radlan and tarango says we'd be bo bottling top four uh you know battling top four without most contributions and and you know what i love about the red line Taranga? that's what the red line Taranga has done yeah he comes back later on and he's like scratch that we probably don't even make top four this is the reality and, and people go like, the one month where he was in AFCON, we done this and we done that. Yeah, that, that was because Jot is available. Jot is available. The problem is Jot is injured for a longer period of time. Salah's not playing with Jota. So it was an unfair comparison. This, this is the reality. He's not playing with, with Jota. Serious question, why is Isn't Dan's getting more minutes? Mr. Battle Red, you can ask this whole chat on the Friday video. Did I not say I would honestly start Jaden Dance? And I said it again on the Saturday. I said it again on the Saturday. Would I not say, did I not say I'd rather start Dance over Nunez Gakpor Diaz? Did I not say that? I said Jota on the left, Salah on the right, Dance down the, dance down the middle. I said it, bro. I said it. I've had enough. I've had, uh, bro, Jaden Dance is finished against Southampton at home is better than any of the finishes the other three have had all year long. I said it, bro. Start Jaden Dance. I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance, honestly. I really am. I really am fully 100% willing to give him a chance. I, I genuinely want Jaden Dance to start. I'm not even exaggerating. Cody deserves left-wing run of games. I ain't hearing nothing. If it means Nunez and, and, and Diaz go on the bench, I'm here for it. 
I'm here for it. You know, Gakpo left wing, Diaz on the bench, Nunez on the bench, Salah on the right, and uh, Jota down the middle. Let's go. Or for me, I'd rather go Jota on the left, Salah on the right, and Jaden Dance down the middle just to give him a chance. Nunez is a disgrace, by the way. Never been on the train. Nunez is a disgrace. 32 big chances missed. 32 big chances missed out of 39. Out of 39. Are you mocking us? As a man, big up to Abu Bakr. Been a while since I've seen you. Hope you're good. As a Man United fan, I can never have an agenda against Salah. I don't know how Liverpool fans can question Salah. That's what I'm saying, Abu Bakr. I have TKA, who's an Arsenal fan, saying the fact that, that Hussam even has to prove this is crazy. I have Abu Bakr, who supports our biggest rivals, who has seen Mo Salah score a hat-trick in his own backyard, telling me that I can't believe you even have to defend this. Yet I have Liverpool fans falling for the narratives and the agendas and blaming the guy that has 15 out of 30, which is a 50% ratio, just like Diogo Jota, just like him. Instead of blaming the guy with 32 big chances missed out of 39. Come on, man. Big up to you, my guy, Abu Bakr. Sell Nunez and Diaz, buy Watkins or Tony plus left wing. I have an unpopular opinion. I prefer Tony over Watkins. I really prefer Tony over Watkins. By the way, chat, let me ask you guys as well. Uh, would you take uh, Tony or Watkins? I really would take uh, Ivan Tony over Watkins, you know. I actually would take Ivan Tony over Watkins. I'm being serious. This is unpopular opinion. Um, left wing, I don't know. I don't know. Left wing. Thing is, left wingers, there isn't that... Uh, there, isn't, there isn't that much to work with left wing. I don't know what we do in terms of left wing, to be honest with you. Big up to, 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 to you. Big up to Terence. Shout out to you, Terence. Uh, who says... Rivals don't watch games. It's agenda, mind games. Not just, and, and, and you know what's the saddest part? It's when your own fall for it. Terence, that's the saddest part. Imagine imagine watching yesterday's game or the, even the last five, six games and going like, it's actually Mo Salah's fault why we're dropping points. He's like, Mo Salah, rise to the occasion. Bro, what the fuck you mean rise to the occasion? This ain't no, this is not battlefield. So irritating, that, Terence. I'd go with Diaz, uh, Gakpo, Darwin, uh, Darwin, depending on money. But when you say depending on money, we'd actually get more money for Nunez than we do for uh, for uh, for Gakpo. I think we could probably get, based on reputation and what he's done in the Portuguese league, you could probably get 50 for Nunez. And you could probably get 50, 60 for Diaz. I think that's fair. Gakpo, I think if you sell him now, you're getting, what, 30, 25? I don't think you, I don't even think you make your money back on Gakpo. So I think it would be even, unless like he plays incredibly well in the next six, seven games or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, w Ball Knowledge, uh, it's funny because he was disagreeing with me at the start. But as soon as we unpack the whole conversation, he's like, W, Nunez out, all this. Habibi, it's always been a W, Toka. You know, sometimes it just doesn't, doesn't suit your own narrative or agenda. But you know, we, we're not here to do agendas, bro. We're here to speak honestly about where the club is at. You know? That's it. You know? It's not agendas, uh, Toka. It's just the reality, bro. It's just, I, I've just had enough. It's just, it's, I've, I've just had enough of people just blaming, like, the actual good players, bro. Why are you blaming the good players? Blame the shit ones. Uh, I agree about not selling uh, Salah. However, since his injury has been a little bit off, uh, he's our main man and often scores. No question yet. Recently, he hasn't been. Okay, I, I, I've never said he's played well over the last three, four games, by the way. I, I actually haven't said that. I think over the last, uh, okay, three, four games. What, what games are we talking? Three, four games. Atlanta, the whole team was dreadful, except Elliot and McAllister. Yesterday, he wasn't good. Who did we play before Man United? Let me check this quickly. Who did we play for Man United? Man United in the FA Cup. What the hell? Sparta Prague. 
Oh, Sheffield. I don't necessarily think he had a bad, bad game versus Sheffield, you know? I don't necessarily think he had a, like, fully bad game against Sheffield, but I think Atalanta... I think the problem is with the Atalanta, uh, Palace, and Man United game is you, we're kind of blaming the same people. We're kind of blaming the same people, which is the entirety of the forward line, basically. Uh, big up to you, Baked. Big up to Rick Shaw, who says... Um, this team needs a bigger rebuild, but let's be real. FSG target was top four only because it's cheaper. I guess we have to settle for being a nearly team. Yeah, but here's the thing with this FSG stuff. I'm FSG out. Everyone here knows I'm FSG out. Everyone knows, you know, the whole FSG out plane stuff, all of that stuff. Everyone knows this, bro. Like, everyone knows I'm FSG out. However, the position that this team was in, the position that this team was in, we could have went on to win the league, in my opinion. We could have really went on to win the league. We just needed one extra piece. And I'll take this comment if you're using this uh, using this as a criticism, criticism of, of FSG. However, we cannot now sit up here at the start of the season in August and go like, you know, guys, um, um, the target was top four anyway. We cannot do this, guys. Why? Why? I hate when people say that shit. Why do you just change your energy all the time? Why do you just change your energy all the time? You were calling me negative when we were talking about title race. Don't come now tell me our target was top four. Let's all agree if we don't win the league, it's a failure. F all these narratives, F all these agendas, F all this crap. If we do not win the league, it is a failure. Simple. Big up to you, uh, Rick Shaw. Big up to Akila, who says Tony. I actually, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, brother. I genuinely would take Ivan Tony over over Watkins. I think there is more to Ivan Tony's game. I think Ivan Tony would get the likes of Jota involved more and stuff like that. And I think that stuff matters. I'll be honest with you. I really like Ivan Tony. And by the way, had we signed Ivan Tony in January, like I first said, we'd be top right now. I told you from day one, Nunez is a donkey. Don't do the whole I told you so stuff. There are videos of me reacting to us signing Nunez, so don't lie. This is YouTube. I I wanted, uh, you know, I wanted that, uh, I wanted him gone, bro. I wanted him gone. Like, I, I, I didn't want him. I really didn't want him. That's the reality. Big up to you, Sal. You know, you know I don't want him, bro. You know I didn't want him. It's funny, by the way, because no one has, uh, you know, no one has added me or tagged me or any of this shit lately. That's the mad part. You know, because people love to, like, do all this, you know, adding and tagging. And Hussam said this and Hussam said that. And this is why you shouldn't listen. And this is why you should do this. And this is why you should do that. Blah, 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 blah. And then as soon as the reverse happens, no one comes back and says, oh, Hussam, you were right. And the people who do, you get me bigger for being humble. And actually saying it as it is, you know, but the reality is people just, yeah, people just never admit when they're wrong, to be honest with you. Uh, need two forwards, maybe three if Salah leaves. We don't need to spend big money like Nunez. We have good scouts. Like, no, I agree with the sappy sap, by the way. I'm not saying go spend, by the way, didn't they say like a week ago that, uh, I swear they said, didn't they say a week ago that, what's his name? Don't don't do that, Art. What's his name again? Um, Ivan Tony would be available for 30 million. I swear, no, not not 30, 40. I swear they said he's gonna be available for 40 this summer, no? I swear they said he'd be available for 30 this summer or 40 this summer or something like that. I believe they did say that. 40 million for Ivan Tony is it would be a very good price for him. Very good price for him. I I I, I accept that. I actually think 40 million is a very good price for and he's 28, 29, whatever. He could probably give you three, four good years. He'd actually give you three, four good years, I think. I don't think that's anything uh, mad to say, to be honest with you. I think give you three, four good years. So that's that's what I'd say, sappy sap. Anyway, I'm just gonna wrap it up here. Um, big up to 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 uh, Mo, big up to Herman, big up to uh, Rickshaw, big up to Toka, Hydro. Terence, Andrew, Chris, Sapi, Redline, Taranga, Baked, Cooler, Nidal, Ben, Jack, um, My Memories, Mr. Battle Red. Big up to all of you guys for the super chats. Thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure you guys are liking the video. Make sure you guys are subscribing to This Is Football if, if you're yet to do so. Everyone, please hit the like button and subscribe. Love, love, Aaron. 
Um, big up to Rishwin who says, it's a failure if we do not win the league. All Liverpool fans love club, but the truth is no matter how good he is, he'll be judged by silverware. Although I rate him uh, more than Pep, he has underachieved. I agree with this Rishwin, by the way. I agree with this Rishwin. I agree with this Rishwin. Um, if we do not win the league this season, guys, all context will be lost. We just sit up here and we just lie to each other and keep talking about context, this context, that 10 years from now, no one is going to mention context. No one is going to care about context. All the people will say is, Hussam, you have one league title. That's it. That's it. For us as Liverpool fans, we remember the context, but all people will say is Klopp has one league title. Simple. That's what people will say. History remembers the winners. That's what history remembers. Make sure you guys are slapping the like button and subscribe right here, right now. Um, do you see us bringing in Tony under Edwards' plan? Probably not. But they, he was asking me, who would I take, to be fair? He wasn't asking me, who would we bring in? We're more likely to bring in a Joker, as to be fair. Um, so, we are going to be raiding Lee Gunner, guys. Big up to you, Baked. Big up to you, Rishwin, as well. We're going to be uh, raiding Lee Gunner chat. And we don't want it, we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to say anything wild. All I want you guys to say is Hussam Raid. That's it. Don't say anything crazy. Copy paste this comment. Here, I'm going to post it again. Copy paste this comment. I'm going to be in uh, Lee Gunner's chat just now. So copy paste the comment with Hussam Raid. You get me in, in, in the chat. So uh, that's, that's what we're doing. Season's done. Unfortunately, here, copy paste this. I'm going to be in the chat. Season's done. Unfortunately, season's finished. We ain't going to win no league. We ain't going to win no Europa League. And yeah. Which is going to be vibing from not at the end of the year. I'm going to see you guys on the other side, guys. Just, just spam this in the chat.